Hey guys, and welcome to my DVD collection video where I talk all about my favorite 80s horror films. And I've talked about doing this one for a while, and I'm finally getting to it. Well, I'm just going to go through them. And I picked these ones because these are the ones that really stood out to me. They had a real 80s you know, quality to them. You could really tell they were 80s films. And they're ones that I like to watch a lot. And I think at one point I'll probably do a part two of this, but as of right now, I just went through and picked the main ones that I really like. The first one is a really obscure one, and I don't even think it's on official DVD yet. I got this at one of the horror conventions. It's called Summer Camp Massacre. No, Summer Camp Nightmare. Summer Camp Massacre might be another one. But this is about, like, these kids at this summer camp, and they sort of rebel and, like, hold captive the head of the camp. And it was a really weird movie. I really do like this one. And they make these kids climb across this, like, scary rope bridge and... The one guy, like, you think he's going to die, and it, it's weird. It's sort of like Lord of the Flies, but it's, it's a but like a PG-13 camp 80s teen film. But I really do like this one, but I don't think you can get it many places, though. I had to get it at a horror convention. The next one is, um, I don't even know if there's enough interest in a real DVD. I don't know if that many people remember it. The next one is The Burning, which I think, to me, is scarier and at least gorier than the first Friday the 13th. And it came out about the same time, like a year later. They might have been made the same time. There's, all this, there's always like talk which one was first and who, do you know what I mean? But it's about like this killer who kills the kids at the summer camp with these scissors. And there's a lot of actually big stars in this. Jason Alexander was in it before he was popular. And a couple people, other people, I don't remember who they were, but I know I'd seen them in a lot of other things like recently. And that's definitely one to watch. And the one, the one star of this though is the kid from um, Fast and Rhythm on High. The next one I've talked about this a lot, and this is definitely a must own. I'd say it's one like an '80s end of the world. It's kind of more sci-fi, but it's kind of horror as well. And it's um, got really cool synth music as well. And it's um, Night of the Comet about like that everyone goes out to see this comet and they all die and there's just like these few teenagers left in the world and and everyone else there's a few of these infected like zombie like people around and I really like this movie and I definitely think everyone should give this a shot but but if someone's like against you know real 80s you know I'm I'm sure there's some people at least some real current people who are against stuff like this then don't watch this because it's really not up your alley if you're against it for some reason but this is a great, true 80s, I mean, everything. I always, And they had they couldn't use Cindy Lauper for some reason, so they used someone who sounded just like her. You won't even tell the difference in this sort of, like, buying shopping scene when they're, like, shopping in, like, a department store because they're the only people left in the, or in the world. This is definitely a must-watch, though. The next one is one that I, I've talked about a couple times as well. It's called Slime City. And it's about like this guy. I never can remember what it's about, but he's like melting in his in his apartment, and he's sort of becoming slime. And it was just a really cool '80s like independent film. It came out in '89. And I said this story once before. I was at a horror convention, and there was a big table of these. And like, I was looking. I'm like, oh, I think I'll get this. And like, I I didn't know who like any of the people were. And then they said, Would you like this sign? And I was like. Uh, I got, for some reason, I wasn't thinking very smart. It turned out it was like the whole cast of the movie at this table, and I said, oh, no thanks. I don't know. The next one I picked, and I've talked about this a zillion times, and this is definitely, if you like the videos that we make, and you like 80s movies, and you like shot on video, or you like independent horror films, definitely pick this up, and it's The Witcher Massacre. And it's John McBride's movie, and he's on YouTube, YouTube user Pollen Facts, and he has some of his music videos and things like that. But definitely, definitely check this out. And you can get this on CD Universe for really cheap, and people have been telling me you can rent it off of Netflix if you want. I never did any of that, but like you can do, a, do it that way if you want. The next one, and in my opinion, this is like my favorite zombie film, and has always been, and it's The Return of Living Dead. This is the newer DVD release. I don't this see the cover is like this and then like this underneath I like the old cover best this is like a new one it's not as good but um and this one they couldn't get Dan o um you know the director Dan O'Bannon to do a commentary for this like a new one they couldn't get him to do really any interviews which is too bad and what sucks about the new releases they've yet to release 
the extended scenes because you know the extended version or the cut stuff and they always act like it doesn't exist and I have a um, bootleg that I got from a horror convention that has all that stuff so it does exist and, that, and there's probably a better print somewhere as well and the next one and this is um, a weird one that not many people bring up much and it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 and it's with um, Toby Hooper directed this again and Dennis Hopper is the star of it this is a great 80's one and it's this is where Bill Mosley pretty much got his start and created the Chop Top character which people remember more than the movie itself they remember that character and he was sort of the inspiration for Otis and you know House of a Thousand Corpses but definitely check this one out this is the newer release and the old one came out with an R rating the old DVD it was actually the uncut version. This one says unrated as well. So it's the same cut. It's not different than the other DVD. But it's got more features. And then I've got so many different versions of this movie. And I've, I have not never talked about it before. And I don't know why. I guess it was because there's been so many sequels to it. I just didn't feel like discussing it. But I do really like the first movie. And it's um, Reanimator. And you all know about this. This is definitely, like, you know... Jeffrey Combs doing those experiments and bringing back those dead people in that, you know, medical school. And they're doing another one of them now. I can't, it's weird they're making so many of them. You, you'd think they'd stop or you'd think, I don't know, it's just kind of weird. Because the last one that was in jail was alright, but it, it really wasn't the best. And the next one is um, Pet Cemetery, Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. And the kid from this, Dead Pit, um, just put up an interview with him. It was interesting to see him again now. I, he's never come to like Horror Find or Chill Art. I'm hoping at one point the kid from this, he's the same age as me now, hopefully he'll come to one of these. But this stars, you know, Fred Gwynn and um, uh, whoever that main guy is. I never remember who his name is, but he's been in a lot of stuff. But I always remember Fred Gwynn, you know, Herman Monster in this. And it's about them, like Fred Gwynn, like the kid gets run over by the car and Fred Gwynn tells him about the... Indian burial ground, and if you bury him, you'll come back. So the kid comes back as this crazy kid. It, definitely watch it though. And I think um, this one is the, like one of those slasher movies that, like, you know, became one of the most well known ones. And it's Nightmare on Elm Street. And the first one, I, I actually liked most of these movies. I really liked the first one. And surprisingly, this is going to sound crazy. But I really, really like the second one. And a lot of people don't like it. I guess I like it because it's so 80s. or It's just something about the part two that I really like. Most people are really against it. Or they say that's their, their least favorite one. But I don't know. I liked it. And the next one, it's just, it's not really like the best movie. But I always liked it as a kid. So I picked it. And I made this DVD version myself. Because the version that's out now is like a piece of crap. And the... All the, you know, all the music was changed. It's the second Return of the Living Dead, and I this is just a, I just took the the tape I had and put it on a DVD and cut the box out. But you, the DVD out now is fine, like the transfer and everything. But they like redid the music or reused this crappy synth stuff that was no good. And what's funny though is if you watch the Spanish version of it, you can hear the the correct music. But I don't know. This is I just always like this one. It's not a very good movie, but it was just always something I sort of liked. Um, the next one, and out of the Friday the 13th movies, I have them all in this set. I, most of them were the 80s. I like most of them. You know, the first one was the best one. And, of course, they're remaking it now. And I'm, I'm interested to see if they're going to, you know, since Jason didn't come around until, like, the th third movie. Or, or you didn't see that hockey mask. No, it was in the second movie, and the first movie was The Mother is the Killer. And I have a, find it, kind of find it hard to believe that the remake, they would have The Mother be the killer. I don't know how well like a current audience would respond to that. I don't know. I feel like they're just going to make it be Jason. And I don't know. We'll have to see. The next one is the second Creep Show film. And I really enjoyed this one as much as the first. And I really like the the best one on here was the those ki kids that went out and swam to that wharf in the middle of the water and that slime monster stuff comes out and like melts them and kills them that always creeped me out but that was a really good one and the other one was like that Indian statue that came to life and scalped that guy both of them are really good and this is and this is another one I've discussed a lot and it's 
out of all the George Romero dead movies, this is my favorite one for some reason. I don't know. I just like the whole underground and the whole trapped nature of the whole film. And it's Day of the Dead. And this is like this DVD release. I have both. I have this one and I have the old one. Of them. And at some point I'll get the Blu-ray, but they said it's not the best picture. But this is definitely, you know, it's about those people living under the ground. And then, like that doctor is experimenting with the one, that bub. And, you know, he starts, like, making progress with them. And, you know, I don't even need to discuss movies like that because you all know what they're about. Next one is a Toby Hooper film. And there, I believe this is getting remade. It might have gotten canceled. It, it was in talks to be remade, but I don't know if they're still doing it. It's Toby Hooper's The Fun House. And this one's a really good movie. The only problem with this movie was it's so dark that it's sort of kind of... I don't know, it's, it's always was kind of hard to see a lot of the movie because it was basically lit like, like almost with flashlights by these kids who sneak into an abandoned... Like, not an abandoned, but at night they go in like one of the last ride-throughs of the Fun House ride. And it's like one of those cool, like big, fair Fun Houses and they sort of... I don't know if it was like a traveling car. I think it was a traveling carnival, but I, I never could figure out how it worked because it looked like one of those ones that would stay in the same place because it had a basement and it was huge. But I don't know, but it's about these kids that like stay in the fun house at night and the people below like who all work, work in there, he witnesses like the kids witness this like kind of deformed guy wearing a like a, I don't remember, like a certain mask and he kills this prostitute and then like the kids saw it and then they were then the kids get killed off in this fun house and it's I don't know it's a very cool movie and it's one of the least talked about Toby um, Toby Hooper films though I think and the next one is a weird one that, that I, I don't know I believe the guys who did Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3 the guy who did them directed this and I don't know I, I always liked this movie and and I don't know, It's I think it's from like 89 or something like that. And it's Funland. It's about this clown at the circus who gets at like this fair kind of thing. I don't know if it was shot where it was shot. It was shot in one of those theme parks. And he gets fired after being there all these years and pretty much goes crazy and and wants to kill the people like with this shotgun from the roof. And very weird movie. But definitely check it out. And the director, hopefully, he's going to come back and do some more stuff. And People have said that he might be. And he wants to do another sleepaway camp. But they're already doing that return to sleepaway camp. So he said it might be difficult to end up happening. And the next two is in a two-pack. And I like the second one the best. It's the Ghoulies film, films. I Like the second one, like my favorite shot in the whole movie is that scene with the moon. In the beginning when it's like it's a full moon. or However the way he says it. And that guy who's the alcoholic in that is so cool. I don't know, I, this is just something that I always liked as a kid. And, like, as a kid, I used to have a problem sitting on the toilet because, you know, that one guy, that ghoulie, like, bites the guy's johns off when he sits on the toilet. And the next one is, um, then this one, I don't know if I've talked about this before, and this could fit in, like, a horror comedy category, but it's a must watch. It's the Killer Clowns from Outer Space. It's about, like, the this ship of these clowns crash lands on the Earth, and. They're going around and turning people into the, killing them and turning into these cotton candy things and very cool 80s film. And those Chido brothers directed this and for for so long as was talk, not anymore, but for like the last four or five years ago about a part two to this and they wanted to do it and I hope if you guys see this, hopefully you I hope it happens and nowadays with you know, you know high def and all that you could just shoot it yourself and. But the only thing that would... And you know how to do makeup effects, so you could just do it all yourself. The next one... And this one, everyone hated this movie. Or at least m most people put this down and really shit on it. And I never could figure out what was so bad about it. I guess... I think it's best to just think of it as one th thing and not a sequel to the Halloween films. I just think of it as Season of the Witch. Because don't think of it as a Halloween film. If you think of it as a Halloween film, you're going to go, Oh, it sucked... Mike Myers wasn't in it. I'm like, that's fine. But think of it as Season of the Witch. It's a, and it's about these masks that if you wear these masks, they like sort of kill you. And it's like that Eight More Days to Halloween, that great song. And I'll just give this one a shot. Don't think of it as a Halloween movie. There, It's really a good movie. It, I really do like it. And I really like the synth music in this. And I think John Carpenter 
might have did the synth music. I can't remember, though. I think he did. But it's definitely worth watching. And this, and this one... This one is an... This is an 80s film, but Motel Hell is. And this is apparently out of print now and really expensive to buy. But when I, I was thinking about some of my favorite movies, and Motel Hell is definitely like one of my favorite in like at least the top 50 films about these two who kill the people that and like they come into their hotel and turn them into this jerky. It's like um, Farmer Vincent's fritters. There's nothing tasting in Farmer Vincent's fritters. It's like a whole lot of crit a whole lot of critters going to Farmer Vincent's fritters. And I don't know. I just have always liked this movie. I saw this for some reason when I was really young, like I, I don't know, eight or nine, and always like really liked this. And there, of course, it's being remade now. And I can't think of who else could play for our Vincent except for Clint Eastwood. I don't know why. I could just see Clint Eastwood doing that. But it would have to be a really cool old man. I hope. But nowadays they might use like some really like stupid looking like or like 30 year old or something I don't know it has to be like a really cool classic acting old man in order for it to be any good and this is another true 80s and that Brian Trenchard Smith directed this and it's called Dead End Drive-In it's about like all the teenagers of this town they try and like trap them like all the bad people and like the pain in the ass kids they trap them in this drive in and lock them in at night and they can't leave so basically they're trapped in the drive in for the rest of their life apparently it's a very strange story but i don't know it's sort of like like mad max in there and it looks like a normal drive in when they drive through like it starts with this like kid going through and then like at night the gates lock at night and i think they're electric fences or something i don't know it it, it just watch it it's very cool and this is of course you can't not mention critters the first critters, like second, third critters in stars Leonardo DiCaprio, but I, I don't haven't watched it in a long time. I don't even own that one. But definitely, you know, you know the critters. I had that critters doll that I puppet that I've used in a couple of videos. And the director of Bill and Ted, Stephen Hurek, who directed the first Bill and Ted film, directed this, did a very good job with this, and I love the transformation scenes of the two aliens like when they're trying to find the face they want when they're looking at those rock videos and those movies and this they be it's become a joke nowadays these films but this was film was real serious and like like a real good horror film and it was the first child's play and this was from 1988 like that seed of chucky became, they became like these silly jokes like i don't know the first two were like real serious you know true horror films the third one the third one was sort of a shits and giggles war, like military school movie. There was nothing really wrong with it. They didn't use the same kid as Andy for some reason. I wish they would have just used the same kid, but they used that other kid. He was fine, but I don't know. But the first Child's Play is the best one. And the next one, and I've never mentioned these before, and really do like them, and they're the Demons films that Dario Argento, I believe he just pro he produced these films. And his, you know, Asia Argento, his daughter, was in the second one. She's been in, like, a lot lately, like Land of the Dead, and she's been in a couple of things lately. And that one she directed herself. And th the first one's about, like, this weird little he helmet thing or something that if you touch it, like, you prick your finger on it, you become a demon or something. It, it was kind of peculiar how it worked, but it's about, like, these people in the movie theaters and these demons, like, demon things are like killing them in the theaters. It's a very interesting movie. The second one was all in a like a home, like a big skyscraper with homes in it, you know, whatever you apartment building and like a lot of which takes place in like the garage and they I don't know, 28 day, weeks later stole a, I thought at least copied a few scenes that scene in the garage I thought from the second one but just I don't know I don't know how to explain these too well but I do like them. This one I've never mentioned before, and it's more of a sci-fi film, but I wanted to bring it up. And it's another Toby Hooper film, Invaders from Mars. This is one that I really liked a lot as a kid. I watched this all the time. And then this DVD has got an awful transfer, this old Anchor Bay. It's from 97, one of, like, one of the first DVDs, but I think there's a newer one out. I don't know, though. And just about to finish with these. And the last... And this one I've talked about, 
and it's The Lost Boys. And this, you know, you can't talk about an 80s horror film without mentioning The Lost Boys. And they're doing that sequel to this now, that direct-to-DVD Warner Brothers sequel, I think from Warner Brothers premiere. And people said, are mad that it's not going to go to theaters. I thought they should do it as a one of those Fathom events, you know, like those two days in the theater things. So at least it gets to be seen in the theaters by people who are interested. Or, you know, some kind of an event like that. Because I think it would be cool to watch it in the theaters because, I don't know, it just seems like it should meant to be the sequel. And Corey Hain and Corey Feldman are both going to be in it. No one seems to know how long Corey Hain is in it. If it's a cameo, then there's talk that he's in the whole movie, that maybe it was just like a publicity thing. I don't know how long he's in it, but... And Keith or Sutherland's like, cousin or something, some Sutherland that's related to Keith or Sutherland is in it. It, I think it'll be all right. Hopefully, it, it's not like real current and bad, and like doesn't have any of the qualities of this film, because then it won't be any good at all. But I'm in, I'm really am interested to see it. The next one is the first Creep Show, and this is the old DVD. I know there's a new one, like that's out, but I think it's only the in England. And I saw it at a horror convention, but it said Region Two, and I really like the the like Region Free player I have. This isn't the best quality and I'd prefer to watch in the, you know, up converter player. So hopefully at some point they're going to release the new version of this with the features. And I think it had a commentary. I don't remember though. And this one is the older DVD, but it's the same as the new one. I think the picture is. And it's um, They Live, which is a John Carpenter film that I that I really like. And they play this a lot now on TV, apparently, like on some of those encore channels and I'm always watching it and somehow I always turn on the same point it's about like this guy sort of guy who finds a box he's like a construction worker I believe and he finds a box of these glasses and he puts them on and he sees certain people as these aliens it's like something about the glasses lets you see who's an alien who isn't and he goes around like killing some of the ones and and then the people like find out the aliens find out that he can see them I, and they go after him. It's, it's an interesting movie that I really do like, but it's not very easy to explain. And what I said is pretty much the movie. The next one and is um, a Joe Dante film, and it's the first Gremlins. The second Gremlins, I wanted to talk about that, but I think it's 1990 or 91. And, you know, this is sort of um, Critters kind of was, like, based off of this or sort of copying it. It's about these like this mogwai thing like this this father is trying to get something for his son and he gets in this weird like little creature thing and you're not supposed to feed it after midnight you know get it wet and then the thing gets wet at the house and these you know the gremlins come you know the story of this but you know definitely that's one if you had and if someone who's like hasn't watched it like oh I've never watched that for some reason just just watch it and this one sh I should have talked about this in the, in the gory collection I did and forgot I don't know why, and it's Clyde Barker's Hellraiser, and you all know what this is about like that. I haven't watched this in so long, though, so I can hardly even explain it, but this this, this DVD is the um, the tin one from Anchor Bay from years ago, and it's got, you know, Hellraiser 1 and 2 in it. I think there's a new version out, but I think when I bought this tin years ago, it was really expensive, So, and it's, it's a really cool tin, so I didn't really want to buy it again. And the last one's or the Sleepaway Camp films. I like, and this is this box that has, it was recalled because it has this image on it. And the red cross was, a, you know, against that for some reason. I am mad this doesn't have the disc for the fourth one. I don't know, is any, if any of you have seen that online, I wanted to watch that, that part four, that like that 30 minutes of footage they filmed for it. But this has the first movie, which was 83 the second movie, and I didn't care too much for part three. Part three was alright, and it's not the uncut version either, so that's kind of a let down about it, but it's, um, the first one is the Felicia Rose one, which is a very good one, you know, about, and then the second one, they got Pamela Springsteen, and the girl in the front isn't even her, I, it, it was a weird cover they used, because I remember looking at this all the time, and when I was a kid in Blockbuster, I don't know why, because it had the Freddy glove and that. I was like, I wonder how they got away with doing that without being, you know, considering copyright infringement or something. I guess those aren't copyrighted, but you, you know the Sleepaway Camp movies about the girl 
you, you can't talk about much of it without ruining it, but just just check those out. So that was pretty much my video about my favorite 80s horror films. And at some point I might do a part two to this. And, it, and in the next coming weeks I'm going to do the ones on the 70s films and 90s horror films and then 2000 and up horror films. So um, thanks a lot for watching and for subscribing and for sharing all these videos around. So thanks a lot.